lesson, we will talk about the different kind of task and ticket statuses. So let's just take a look and um, let's get started. So first in Autotask, let's go to the menu in the top left corner and click on admin right here. And let's go to service desk right here and expand on the plus sign. And as you can see, we have task and ticket statuses right here. So let's click on it. And as you can see, we have a lot of different statuses. So when do you use a status? You use a status in a ticket or in a task to display the status uh, of the ticket or task to your colleagues or to the rest of the company. And um, it's very handy to use or um, yeah, to, so if let's say a customer calls and they want to know the status of a ticket, you can just take a look at the status right here and um, yeah, you can, you can just very easily tell the customer, oh, this ticket is planned or we've scheduled it uh, for uh, so-and-so or it's um, waiting for materials or waiting from feedback from a vendor or stuff like that. So it's just, it's really easy to just display the status of a ticket or a task. So let's just go through each different kind of status. And as you can see, we have a few system statuses like new, complete, and waiting customer. And there are also a lot of statuses that we've added ourselves. And um, let, yeah, let, let's just go through them. So when a ticket is created, it'll automatically get the new status. And the new status is just to signify that, yeah, this, this ticket is new and nobody has done anything with this ticket. So that's, that's the first status. So let's talk through a little bit of the ticket flow or the flow of a ticket and go through each of the other statuses. So what we've noticed is that a lot of um, IT companies work with like a dispatcher or they work with a call center and um, they just want to signify when a ticket is has been created. And after the new status, they just want to signify when a ticket has um, been classified and when a tech has first looked at it and said, okay, well, all the information in this ticket is complete. So what you can do is you can add a new status called acknowledged or um, some other companies um, uh, just use, for example, the status accepted or the status assigned. And um, it's just to signify, okay, well, this ticket is complete and we have all the information we need to, to yeah, um, solve this ticket or to start the troubleshooting process. And um, yeah, everything is complete, but nothing has been done with it. So it's not in progress yet. So um, there is also a status called dispatched, which um, is in a lot of situations used to signify when one tech um, sends the ticket to another tech. So they just get the status dispatched Okay, I have this ticket, but I've uh, sent it to another to another colleague, or I've received this ticket from an from another colleague, and then you can use the status dispatched. The status planned is when you um, have planned uh, the ticket, for example, for over a week or for over for uh, two months in the future or stuff like that, and you just want to um, yeah, well, use the planned status to signify okay, well. We have all the information we need and we have planned it right now or um, we've already worked on this ticket, but um, the further steps should be planned. So you can just use the planned status for stuff like that. Some companies work with a dispatcher and for the dispatcher, when, for example, a service call has been canceled, it's very handy to see which tickets should be scheduled again. So some uh, companies use the status scheduled with a workflow. And in the workflow, what we've done is we've, you know, for, for example, made a workflow um, when a uh, service call has been canceled. We want the status of the tickets to change back to schedule. And the schedule um, will signify for the dispatcher. We can make a widget, for example. Okay, well, this ticket needs to be scheduled again. And after it's been scheduled, the dispatcher can just change the status name, for example, to planned or to um, dispatched, for example. Well, the, the customer node edit status, it's pretty self-explanatory. 
we have a workflow rule active where um, if a customer um, sends an email uh, or adds a note through the client portal, the status of the ticket will change to customer note edit. And we can filter on it in, for example, widgets. So the text know exactly which tickets has, have been replied to by customers and while well, they should just take action on those kind of tickets. The next status in progress is also pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's just used by techs for when they are working on a ticket and it's in progress. After these, we have four kind of different waiting statuses. The first is waiting approval, for example, when someone is um, asking for a new uh, computer, you might want to get approval from the primary contact. You can set the status on waiting approval so it's the SLA is passed. Another status is waiting materials. For example, when you're waiting on materials from the customer to send it to you, you can just set it on waiting materials. And um, yeah, the waiting customer is also pretty self-explanatory that um, you, can, you can just add a workflow um, to send different kind of messages, for example, at three, five, seven days, and just self-close the ticket at 10 days if you haven't got a reaction by then from the customer. And the waiting vendor status is to signify while well, we're, we're waiting on uh, feedback from a vendor. For example, um, if we have a ticket uh, with Microsoft, we might want to set the status to waiting vendor. So yeah, to signify that we are waiting on feedback from Microsoft. The on hold status is uh, used to signify that a ticket is on hold for a longer time period. Um, you can either use a status for that or you can use a queue with a workflow for that. The differences is that if you use the on hold status, the ticket will be still be visible in the ticket list from the different kind of engineers. Whereas if you use a on hold queue, you can just use a workflow that will place the tickets back um, in the normal queues or in, for example, the client portal, for example, three days before the due date of a ticket. So when a engineer just forwards the uh, tickets to the on hold queue, they don't have to keep it on their own name, which is a little bit cleaner for the techs um, because they don't get to see the tickets and they just will see it It'll, it'll be transferred back to the right kind of queue when uh, the due date is within reaching distance or when whenever the due date is near. We use the um, pending completion status for tickets which have been resolved by our techs. And after the pending completion status, we have a workflow which will um, automatically send a message to the customer or to the user uh, saying, well, we've solved your ticket. Is this solution acceptable for you? Or is this solution okay for you? And if it is, then they can, uh, they don't have to do anything. And if it isn't, they can just reply to the tickets and it'll revert back to the customer node edit status. And if everything is okay, well, the, the ticket will just go to the status complete after a few days. So um, yeah, we use the pending completion status as sort of, it's complete from our, our view, but we give the customer the option to just um, say, well, this, this is not the kind of solution we wanted or we want something else or our prob problem is still available right now. So yeah, that's how we use that. And uh, it'll, it'll automatically through a workflow go to the next um, status, which is complete. And um, yeah, we also, we also have a auto resolve status. And the auto resolve status is also added through a workflow for our monitoring tickets. So let's say a ticket is created through our monitoring, for example, Dr. RMM. We want to make a user-defined field or UDF for uh, auto-resolved yes or no. And after a ticket is auto-resolved, we have a workflow that, that'll set the UDF to auto-resolved yes. And after it'll go to complete um, or a workflow will set the status to complete. And why is this? Because this way we can always um, view back or get a history which tickets have been auto-resolved before. And if a ticket has been auto-resolved before and it is reopened by our monitoring, 
then we know we have to dig a little bit deeper or we have to get to the bottom of the... or we will have to find the cause for the creation of this ticket. We know when we have to dig a little bit deeper. So yeah, those, those are all the different kind of statuses. Let's take a look at the second column, which is SLA event. And um, the SLA event, as we've discussed before with the uh, SLAs, will just signify when uh, each SLA event is triggered. And as you know, the waiting customer status will pause the whole SLA. So the due dates for the SLA will be set or will be recalculated when uh, the ticket gets another status. Yeah, so that's it for the ticket statuses.